Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure uh, to speak in this chamber to you on an issue which is absolutely crucial from the perspective of young people. In many ways, we get hope from the fact that we are the most educated generation today, but we fear at the same time that despite this, the world is changing so fast that this is not enough. Oh, <laughs> I survived. Thank you. Um, as we embark on a fourth industrial revolution, we witness the hollowing of many traditional jobs. And so we know that in, we need to really reinvent many things. And education remains probably the best and only guarantee in this future. But it's no longer about more education, but it's about us getting to become more clever. Skills mismatch is an obvious and real concern, and we recognize that although youth unemployment is going down, it's currently at 18% or around, still rather bad, but it's also very different from country to country. But if you look beyond that figure, we see that up to one of three young people are either in jobs for which they are under or overqualified for. So, but let's not put the blame on young people and let's look at what we can do. Partly, our economies are failing to create jobs, so we need more investment. On the other hand, we have not perhaps counseled young people to uh, take alternative paths, such as vocational education, or dare become entrepreneurs. Uh, we don't nearly have enough good examples for young people in terms of role models. In this very fastly changing economy, so the question is how can we adjust young people and people to adjust in this situation? And solutions are twofold. Of course, at the European level, we must get our economic, monetary and fiscal policies correct to support investment. And this is where EU can do a lot. But I don't want to focus on this right now because if you look at the long, long term, we realize that the basic obstacle is in the fact that our educational system is failing in many ways. There are lots of good things, but is it good enough? First, it's way too formal. Our educators, formal educators, think almost that they hold a monopoly on learning. Then it's also very rigid, very difficult to change. Just imagine the poor teachers who are, always have to discuss what to change in the curricula, in a curricula which is already overcrowded and where they're expected to only add things instead of think about how to change the way that we teach. And for many teachers, they come with academic perspectives and they're measured on the performance of students based on standardized testing. So we have things that we really need to change and we want to encourage teachers that bring practitioners and entrepreneurs into classrooms that go out of the school's environment and do project-based learning. And the role of the teachers in our societies is absolutely crucial, mind you, in societies, not in the classroom only. So our aim should be to get best and the brightest young people into teaching positions, because soon we will have no choice. Today, in many European countries, the average age of teachers is already so high that even if we take urgent action to fill those positions with young people, we will fail to still fill in the gaps. So we will lack skilled teachers soon enough. But let's see this as an opportunity to change things. Uh, today, OECD countries spend on average eight to nine thousand dollars US dollars per student in their educational systems, mostly public money. Let's imagine if we take a year out of that investment and invest that differently in a wholly different educational experience. We could assign them learning credits for developing themselves outside the formal education in an environment where collaboration and teamwork, developing leadership skills and communication, creativity are at the heart of the learning, not regurgitating facts as we often see in formal education. Does this sound familiar? Yes, because this is what happens in work-based education. This is what happens in, when young people participate in youth organizations, when they do projects in their communities. And we already know that economies that focus or, for example, have a very good work-based learning system have much lower unemployment. But instead of imagining complicated policy reforms directed from a European level, we should think how can we reshuffle some of these resources directly to young people, families, enterprises, youth organizations to, to, to make this happen. Um, 
it would be a game changer, I think, if we start thinking in this ways. To 12 years at school, does it matter? 11 years, maybe we can change the part of that education. Basic skills are absolutely crucial, but without the transversal skills, and this is where our formal education fails, we will not have the future where we need to be ready for an automated economy, circular economy, and many other things to look forward to. When we look at things like the skills guarantee, well, again, how can we tap into bottom-up solutions when we look at that? We've learned from the youth guarantee that despite the policy intervention needed to bring young people that are far away from the labor market back in, we see that if we do that from a European level, it's very long and winding, can be complicated, and the coordination can sometimes even be discouraging for reform. So we need game changers in the education. And well, what can EU do directly otherwise? Today, and I'll end on this point, we spend two euros per young person for programs like Erasmus. Surely, we can look at the European budget, which is a drop in the ocean, but is it the right drop in the ocean? But surely we can see how can we increase that two euros and make sure that that goes beyond the traditional university exchanges to encourage work-based education and project-based learning. Thank you very much.